everybody. This is going to be level one genetics problems. I'm going to start with problem number two. Okay. So there we are. And this is going to be number two. All right. So it reads, if two animals, heterozygous for a single gene, are mated and have 200 offspring, about how many will have the dominant phenotype? All right, so you should know that a heterozygous heterozygous cross from your six representative monohybrid crosses lead to a three to one dominant to recessive phenotypic ratio in the next uh, generation. Um, so what that means is three quarters or 75% would be dominant. All right. Now, what does that mean? We have 200 offspring, so we've got to take the 200 offspring. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.75, which is the same thing as 75% or 75 per 100. And that, of course, equals 150. All right. So there's your answer for number two. Uh, let's move down here a little bit. Let's work through problem number three. Number three reads this way. Two long-winged flies were mated with were mated, and the offspring included 77 with long wings and 24 with short wings. Is the short wing condi condition dominant or recessive? What are the genotypes of the parents? All right, so let's write down what we have here. Um, we've got 77 long wing offspring and 24 short winged offspring, which is pretty much a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, and if you know about a three to one ratio outcome uh, in the next generation, that's likely a heterozygous heterozygous cross. So if both parents are heterozygous, that means they're showing the dominant phenotype. To me, what that means is big L should be long and little L should be short wings. All right, and so if both parents are heterozygous, And if we use these allele symbols, that means the parent genotypes. Would look like this. Okay? Big L, little L, big L, little L. All right, let's do problem number four. Problem number four reads, if we cross a heterozygous tall pea plant with a dwarf pea plant, what proportion of the F1 would be expected to be tall. All right, now, we got to read some context clues here. Heterozygous tall, remember, heterozygous gives you the dominant phenotype. So that should clue you in that tall is dominant and short, or otherwise known as dwarf, would have the lowercase t there. All right, now, reread the problem again. If we cross a heterozygous tall pea plant, so that's this, with a dwarf pea plant, which would be short, in order to have the recessive phenotype, you must have a homozygous recessive genotype. Uh, the question is, what proportion of the F1 would be expected to be tall? All right. Now, we can do the Punnett square. So there are the alleles, possibilities uh, from this parent. And let's do the gamete allele possibilities from the other parent across the top. Recombine those alleles. And you can see from the Punnett square, the offspring are the have the genotypes inside the boxes here. That means we have half heterozygous, which means, of course, tall. And we have one half homozygous recessive, which, of course, means short, short or dwarf. Um, or you could just remember your um, six representative monohybrid cross proportions, and you should know that a homozygous, excuse me, a heterozygous crossed with a homozygous recessive, what that leads to in the next generation in terms of our proportions, genotypically, would be 0 to 2 
to 2, and then phenotypically dominant to recessive, that leaves a 2 to 2 proportion. Okay, so that's problems 2 through 4 in the level 1 genetics problems.